Well, hey everybody, this is an episode of the Vinyl Village Garage. I'm gonna work on getting the floor pan cut out of the 68 Bird Convertible project here. But you can see behind me up on the roof of my other car there, the floor pan showed up. I took a week off, took the family on vacation. I get back, I guess it's playtime again. So instead of poking around under the hood, I'm work on getting this floor torn out of here. So I guess the first step though, before we start cutting this thing apart, need to make some kind of a bracing mechanism to keep the car from shifting a whole lot. So I'll work on that here. And if you've never done this before, I'll show you how I do it. It seems to work pretty good and maybe it'll help you out in case you try to do something like this. I'm going to show you here on the, the dry erase board what I have in mind to brace this car up. At least so you kind of idea what's, what I'm thinking. But essentially, I guess if you think of the side profile, we use the red marker for the car because, well, it's a red convertible, so I guess that's only fitting. But this is the, see, that's the door opening, rear quarter panel, and then the uh, front fender of the car. Now, I'm not really worried about this dimension a whole lot by cutting only the floor pans out of it. It's really not gonna flex a whole lot. And the other thing I'm gonna keep an eye on is the door jam gaps. And of course, this car is already 50 years old. It's already settled some anyway, so it's probably not exactly right anyway. The more dimension I'm more concerned with is let's say if you're looking straight down at the floor, it kind of forms a rectangle. This is the firewall, rear seat, driver's side rocker panel, patch side rocker panel. What I don't want is these discs between this corner and this corner to get larger or smaller because essentially the car is going to shift like this. That's what I don't want to happen. Cutting the floor out, that could potentially cause that to happen. And that's the thing that I want to prevent. The best way to do that essentially is just, I mean, it's a different color here. Tie the left front corner to the right rear corner and the exact opposite, right front corner to the left rear corner you know, and weld it there in the middle. That'll keep the car from shifting in that dimension. Like I said, I'm not worried about the car really flexing this way a whole lot because I'm not cutting the rocker panels out of the car. I'm only removing the floor pan and then patching the passenger side rocker panel. So I'm not really concerned about getting carried away by adding any bracing from here to here between the door jam and the uh, firewall. So I don't think I'm gonna mess that this time around because I'm only doing the floor. So that's essentially what I'm gonna do. I just wanted to illustrate that for you to so get an idea of what I gotta do and make it happen. And I got the car all jacked up. What I'm gonna do Put the jack stands underneath the axle and on the front i put it underneath the control arms to kind of still simulate the way of the vehicle on the suspension because well that's real life application i'm not going to support the vehicle in a different spot than what we would normally be supporting the weight so at this point i'm going to say this is kind of like give me some more height to get underneath the car without a struggle now just as a point of reference you can see before this door gap is just as lousy as it was before it didn't improve it didn't change it just wasn't going to get you before and then Wait, after you can see that it doesn't really change and then the driver's side yeah it's actually a little better looking but uh yeah, it's a little tight but a little better looking gap than the passenger side so the next step is going to be get underneath there and tie the rear frame rows together now when you get down here of course one nice thing about a hot day and a cold concrete floor and it's pretty comfortable. Now here's, of course, spring, spring mount. These are gonna get replaced, thank goodness. Shouldn't be a stud, it's supposed to be a, a cage nut. But here's one of the frame rails, and then shoot across the other side, you can see the other frame rail over there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tie these rear frame rails together, so I'm gonna be cutting the floor pan out of it, and then I'm gonna tie the frame rail itself to the heavier metal here on the rocker panel, so that way, these dimensions won't change in or out or up or down once those are tied together then i'm going to tie it up there to the front of the rocker panel where it's still good and do my x across the underneath the car to each opposite corner and at that point i'll start cutting the floor out well i'm going to show my ignorance here just a little bit because i've done a handful of 1969 firebirds this is the first uh 1968 firebird that i've done but what I've just made the observation of, a 1969, there's a welded plate on the floor to attach the brake lines, fuel lines to the floor pan. Well, 68 appears just to be an anchor holding it down. So that floor pan that I had purchased 
is correct the way that it is. So even better news. So I guess I have to say I like the AMD panels even more. I get you back under here. Well, I've got the passenger front corner tied, uh, driver side front corners tied, X in the middle welded together. I put a cross brace all across the rear of the car, tying the rocker panels here to the cross brace, and then the frame rails tied to that cross brace. So at this point, I'm going to say we're all tied up and all ready to go and we'll start cutting that floor out. All right, all the under bracing has been welded in and put in place. The next step is going to be get the seat bases out, particularly the driver's side, because it is salvageable and actually pretty good condition. Passenger side, on the other hand, I'm probably just going to cut it up to get it out of the way. Uh, I've actually unscrewed the uh, body mounts. Here's something kind of cool that you don't normally see. Those of us that have actually built a handful of these old cars, the bolts don't normally look like this. Normally they're rusted completely 100% away. So it's a shame this car has floor pans as rusty as they are because the rest of the car is really not too bad. So like I said, next step, work on getting these seat bases cut out of here. I'll get started on this here. I think the first part we're going to do is remove the seat base from the floor pan and the subframe mount here, get that out of the way. And then as for removing the rest of the floor pan from the rocker panel, don't think it's gonna be much of a fight. I just kind of push my fingers through here and it's just chunking away even further, so. Yeah, dig a little deeper on the removal of that seat base and determine, not worth salvaging. It's actually got rust clear down the rear side of it and the whole front corner is pretty rough. Now these aren't horribly expensive. I just try to salvage as many original parts as possible in this case. I think it's kind of call it what it is. It's it's just not really worth fixing. So I'm gonna make this a lot easier. I'm just gonna cut that thing right in half and get to that rocker panel real quick. Now I guess I'm gonna go ahead and just take the cutoff wheel and just zip this thing right out. Now a word of caution when doing this. Now of course the cool thing is this car's so rusty. This is actually the fuel line that has gasoline in it potentially. So clearly cutting around gasoline could be a potential fire. So just be aware of that in case you try and do something like this. There's a gas line that runs down the entire rocker panel all through here then jumps over to the subframe then rides along the subframe so just keep that in mind when you're cutting that to, you don't want to hit that Got more of the front cut, as you can see, still no inner rocker. Got the back notched out here. We'll see about taking that. Let's see what prizes are behind here. Mm. Stubborn. Well, more rust. Surprise. Not really. And more fun mouse garbage. one of the seat in case you're curious that's the seat base see here rusted 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 through and then the front edge wasn't much better so that's why i decided to go ahead and scrap that and good news is i didn't hit the fuel line yeah <laughs> unfortunate thing obviously they leave the under the seat bare metal but sadly it hasn't rusted there under the carpet and yeah, it's dead so seat base is out next part let's go ahead and get this whole center section cut out and keep on moving forward well i'm going to use most of the spot welds on this older metal surprisingly it comes apart relatively easy with a little wide air chisel bit um I actually kind of popped in there between the rocker panel and the floor panel. I'm trying to salvage the convertible bracing because it's actually in really good condition. So I'm going to try to sneak between the rocker panel and the floor pan and get all these spot welds to pop. So I'm going to work my way all the way up here just past where the front convertible brace is at. 
Then I probably take the uh, death wheel and cut the floor all out and pull this whole center section out. And once that's out of the way, then we'll start removing what's left of the floor pan. So that's my next tip. Go ahead and start working this loose, see what happens. Now what you can see here, rocker panel, floor pan, you'll see a gap all the way along here. I'm only tearing up the floor pan, which is fine because I'm going to be replacing that. But you can see the rocker panel still stays nice and straight. The uh, spot welds are pretty uh, pretty weak, I guess you'd say, but uh, I've got them cut loose all the way here just in front of the convertible bracing. So I said the next thing, I'm just going to take the old cutoff wheel and cut out the floor and remove this whole center section here right quick. I'm going to say this center section is about to come out. All right, got the floor pan out. You can kind of see it from back here that, uh, well, I guess you say it's Flintstone powered now at this point. You get extra kids, go a little faster, but... That's an easy way, I guess, to change the U-joints in the dry shaft. Here's the exhaust. You can see the X-brakes tying this thing all together to keep it from falling apart. But I guess I'm kind of wondering how bad is the frame? All right, well, good news is that's actually still a circle. So no subframe repair required for this one. So added bonus, less time, less work for me. Um, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna keep continuing to work my way up here removing the entire floor pan. I just want to get this out of the way, see what we're getting into. And of course, the driver's side rocker panel, I'll tell you, it's in pretty good shape. And of course, a little surface rust around the bottom, but I'll clean up where I cut out the floor pan, but that shouldn't be too bad off. And I'll come back here and remove the rest of this floor pan out through here. Now, the unfortunate thing is we knew the passenger side rocker panel was bad. Well, I didn't have to do much for removal. It just kind of fell apart so we're going to have to do some surgery on the passenger side here but it's getting about eight o'clock so i'm going to shut it down for tonight uh, i'll probably go ahead and do the next part of the next episode or i might tinker with here a little bit get some more of this floor cut out that's probably not all that exciting seeing this come out the, 
I guess the cool part is we start putting this thing back together, but I'd say we're off to a great start. Got most of the floor out. Show the uh, convertible bracing that I've got to salvage off of what I just cut out. Now what happens here, these pieces here, there's actually three pieces, one main piece, a left and a right. Those are still in fantastic condition. I'm going to reuse those, but the unfortunate thing is it's separating it from the old floor pan and getting it out of the way, but that's gonna be one of the next things that I'm gonna do. I'm going to reuse these, like I said, they're in good shape. That's the reason I cut that center section out like that I did so that I could, you know, recover those pieces and reuse them. Well, there you have it. Got the car all braced up. Uh, got the center section of the floor cut out so that I can recover the convertible brace floor pan pieces so that they can be recycled and used again. Uh, I looked actually they're in pretty good condition. Super happy about the subframe not being rusted out, which is very typical and common on these cars. So no subframe patching or repairing on that. So added bonus of saving some time. But I'm going to say it's going to wrap us up for this time around. It's getting to be about 8 o'clock here in the old vinyl village. And well, I like to make nice with the neighbors and not upset them because this can be a little bit noisy. Plus, I got to work tomorrow anyway. So I'm going to wrap this thing up this time around. Next episode is probably going to be working on getting that inner rocker panel on the passenger side doctored up so that it can, you know, take the new floor pan. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do that one yet. It needs a little more work than I anticipated, but it's definitely salvageable and make this car a great driver condition again. So I guess uh, give me a couple of days here, get this thing cleaned up. And then, of course, coming on the weekend, I'll have some time to work again. So appreciate you following us here. If you like what you see, you know, please subscribe, help me out. And then, of course, anything you'd like to see done, of course, sit in the old messages down there. And I've also learned that this car is supposed to be painted the autumn bronze. So I may have to rethink the paint coat on this car. So that's kind of a fun little hint for everybody i learned that uh, underneath where the body mats were at was kind of a bronze color so check the paint code and uh, i guess i didn't realize it was what it was so kind of a cool color if you get a chance check that out but uh, i guess we're gonna wrap it up this time around uh, thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time